questions uh, that you might have. Okay, so thank you very much for that and let me begin. Uh, so I will share my screen. Uh, please allow me to share my screen. Thank you. Yes, yes I follow it. Okay, so thank you very much. And I will uh, tell a little bit about myself first and my network, and then I will begin the main topic. So I am Dr. Renuka Thakur, founder of Global Sustainable Futures Progress to Partnership Network. And this network specially was initiated for early career researchers in Global South to, sorry, to connect with people in Global North and to give a free and online and innovative platform to exchange our sustainability practices around the world. Uh, the, here I have put a small video of uh, five minutes which explains vision and objectives of our network. And uh, I won't play today, but uh, I will share the slides with you so you can go and look at it. And especially, I would like to invite you all to join this network because it is free. And what we do, we give a chairship to each one of you uh, based on your expertise. And that gives you the ownership to be within this network. And there is no compulsory activity in this network but it allows us to exchange our, it allows the mobility of our knowledge uh, while remaining on our own place and our own location and doing our own activity. Today, I am proud to have 3000 coordinators around the world in 147 countries. I'm also proud to have this affiliation with the University of Central Lancashire in Preston, UK where they have holding my where they are allowing me to hold my web pages so now coming to the main topic here so let me explain you what is sustainable what we mean by sustainable finance system and sustainable finance system gives us a consideration to environmental social and governance and while making investment decisions in the financial sector, leading to more long-term investments in sustainable economic activities and projects. Environmental concerns might uh, include uh, climate change, mitigation and adaptation, as well as it can also mm -hmm. include It can also include broad uh, objectives such as biodiversity, pollution prevention, and circular economy. Social consideration could refer to inequality, inclusivity, and labor relations, investment in human capitals and communities, and human rights issues. And the governance of public and private institutions include management structures, employee relationship, and executive remuneration. And these all plays a fundamental role in ensuring the inclusion of social and environmental considerations in the decision-making process. In the EU policy context, sustainable finance is understood to support economic growth while reducing environmental pressures and considering social and governance aspects Sustainable finance also encompasses transparency. There is a huge emphasis on transparency regarding risk related to ESG factors, and that might impact the financial system and mitigating such risk through the appropriate governance structures of finance and corporate actors. So there are six principles which have been adopted to uh, uh, display or understand or advocate or to implement our sustainable finance system. And they demand institutional investors a duty to act on a long-term interest of their beneficiaries. 
And in this judiciary role, the investors believe that environmental, social, and governance, in short, it is called ESG issues to affect the performance of investment portfolio. And so, however, the impact varies, you know, with the companies and sectors and regions and classes and the time. However, it is highly uh, recognized that applying this set of six principles will allow us to achieve broader objectives of the society. And these are something like to incorporate ESG issues into investment analysis and decision-making processes, to be active owners and incorporate ESG issues into the ownership policies and practices, to seek appropriate disclosure on ESG issues by the entities in which they invest, to promote acceptance and implementation of principles within the investment industry, to work together to enhance our effectiveness in implementing the principles, and to report on investment activities and progress toward implementing the principles. Such a system is definitely be, uh, like believed to be rewarding long-term responsible investment and benefit the environment and the society. So the global financial system is encouraged to adopt these principles and collaborate for their implementation and foster good governance, integrity, and accountability, and also to address obstacles that come and uh, to uh, while implementing such sustainable finance system. And that could lie within the market structure or regulation. And therefore we need to address these problems and overcome them by implementing or sticking to these six principles. So having understood the uh, definition and the principles of sustainable finance, the next step would be to understand what would be our action plan. And EU has 10 action activities like action plan. They have 10 reforms in three main areas. And these three main areas are reorienting. So what does that mean? That mobilizing, you know, we have investment or we have the resources in our system already, but how to reorient this capital flow towards sustainable investment and to achieve sustainable in and inclusive growth. And there are five activities within that. Second step is to then mainstream. Once we have reoriented or how we have understood how to uh, uh, change the capital flows and how to uh, get into a proper uh, capital flows. The second would be to mainstream that. So mainstreaming sustainability and risk management. And then later on fostering transparency and long-termism in finance and economic activity. So within this uh, reorientation capital flow, we have five activities which are establishing an EU classification system for sustainability activities, which is called taxonomy, which is really important. Creating standards and labels for green financing products, fostering investment in sustainable projects, incorporating sustainability when providing investment advice, developing sustainability benchmarks, so everything has to be incorporated with the principles of sustainability, each and activity around, throughout the life process of the finance system. Mainstreaming sustainability into risk management is to understand how we can integrate sustainability in rating and research and how we can clarify institutional investors that this is the way to go forward. Like uh, what are the assets, investors and asset management's duty, manager's duty to uh, implement these uh, sustainability principles within their investment and the facilities. Incorporating sustainability in prudential requirements. 
and lately we within the fostering transparency and long termism in financial and economic activity we have to strengthen sustainability disclosure and accounting rule making and then later fostering sustainable corporate governance and attenuating short termism in capital market so these are the action plan uh, 10 critical reforms uh, EU had established in uh, tw uh, 2018. And to give power to these actions, you know, we have this action plan, but we cannot execute without having some regulations. And therefore, there were four re legislative proposals, and they were taxonomy, disclosure and duties, benchmarks, and sustainability preferences, that is consultation with ex, uh, experts. Now within taxonomy, it means that we have to make a regulation to establish a framework. And this framework would facilitate sustainable investment. The proposed framework or the regulation would be established with the conditions to create over time and then to unify the classification system that is taxonomy on what can be considered environmental, sustainable and economic activities. So I will explain that uh, further in the next slide. Second is disclosure and duties that the proposal for a regulation on disclosure should be uh, established relating to sustainable investment and sustainability risk. Uh, amending the directives like uh, which was 2016-2341 and IOP which was related to pension and so on. These regulations will introduce obligations on institutional investors and asset managers to disclose how they integrate ESG factors in their risk processes. And there are re requirements to integrate ESG factors in investment decision-making processes, as well their duties towards investors and beneficiaries would be further specified through delegated acts. The benchmark means there should be a regulation. So there was a proposal for a regulation amending the benchmark regulation. And the proposal was to create a new category of benchmarks comprising low carbon and positive carbon impact benchmark to help investors better understand the relative carbon impact of their investment. And finally, in commission, uh, uh, commission had solicited feedback and amendments from the delegated acts under the market and financial market in financial instrument directive, which is MIFID, Two, and the insurance distribution directive to include ESG consideration into the advice they give for the investment firms. So what we mean by sustainability taxonomy? It does not describe or sorry, prescribe you anything, but it gives you some criteria showing that and provides a clarity on what which economic activity will be classified as environmentally sustainable. And that should be integrated into the legislation and should be developed as we know more and more about it. So taxonomy would be the cornerstone for the EU commission and other activities to advance this sustainable finance in time providing a yard, yardstick. So like a measurement to understand how the sustainable capital flows. And it covers activities contributing to climate mitigation and adaptation, adding other environmental and social objectives. But the priority is to assess sector by sector, which mm -hmm. economic activities will be given, sector are good for the climate and the environment. So it is a bottom-up approach until now, we had a top-down approach saying that these are the activities you should do. But no, because we have found that there is a variety into the sectors and actions and activities of each sectors, 
and industrial processes and many other things, we have found this, that there are variety and therefore we need to have each sector understand what is better for them and how they can move towards more environmental uh, economic activities. And that is how this allows us to do it. It also establishes that there should be reporting or a technical, uh, so a technical, sorry, a technical group was uh, actually established to advise on this taxonomy in uh, 2019 and mid 2019, the taxonomy was expanded to climate adaptation and mitigation. And then further it was uh, include, uh, expanded to include social sustainability taxonomy. And still there was some uh, promises to complete the taxonomy by the end of 2022, but we haven't heard about the latest development. All this information is publicly available on the websites. If you just Google Sustainability Taxonomy EU, you will find the latest information. So I have not included here much things, but they are every day evolving. And we will see, you can see uh, for yourself that the changes are uh, coming and it is expanding. It, it is make, becoming more integrated and in, in integrity. So like more and more integrity within the green finance products and green uh, uh, activities. Also, it forms a basis of, you know, standards and labels for green finance products, such as green bonds and investment funds. This would re, uh, also guide retail investors towards creditable green finance products and give these products increased visibility. And it also lay down the foundation for a single EU market for sustainable investment. And so this is uh, all about uh, sustainability taxonomy. And then the standards and labels. So uh, the intention with these activity was to create an EU-wide labeling scheme and the commission to consider socially responsible investment fund labeling. And standards and labels would protect integrity and trust in sustainable finance products while better enabling investors to access such products and benefit uh, retail investors. The commission will also explore the use of these labels uh, uh, within the sustainable finance taxonomy, as I mentioned in the previous slide, and they will be, uh, develop more and more as we get an understanding and experience of those things. And these all, along with the taxonomy and the standards and label will help us build confidence in our sustainable finance products and potentially increase the institutional and retail investor interest in such products. And therefore uh, it is really um, making everything to, bringing everything together to show the importance of green investing. Green bonds market is uh, currently like it, it was slow in uh, up till 2019, but it has grown immensely in, uh, just in last three years and it it has become uh, it has grown in visibility and also has a strong sustainability uh, practice and building uh, a trust among people that this is the way to go forward um Later we want, so here is, uh, we can see on this uh, right hand side figure that the accepted, expected mobilized investment is about two, 232 billion, which is huge money. But how to mobilize? It is all up to us. That is the users of the products and services and the investors, how to mo mobilize these resources. And to so European Union take measures to improve the efficiency and impact of these instruments. And it is very important for all of us to understand that and believe them and to 
contribute to that. So the investment plan is to for them is to mobilize capability, uh, capital for infrastructure. And that is a prerequisite whenever you want to transit to a low carbon economy. And then it would be instrumental in crowding the private finance for sustainable infrastructure, which would mobilize this to uh, 265 million billion euros. Now, EFSI has been extended beyond to uh, 2020, and they are focusing on green infrastructure with 40% of the, its capital directed to sustainable infrastructure and capi, uh, climate action projects. And uh, they have also extended this to uh, Africa and uh, EU Southern and Eastern neighborhood with EFSD plus. And that has, uh, that has a capacity to mobilize further 130 billion. And uh, that will also be between 20, uh, so the plan between 2021 and 2027 is to increase this, uh, foster this uh, investment further in the neighborhood and also in uh, markets where it is possible to do that. So Africa is their first target. And uh, post 2020 period, the European Commission may establish a single investment and integrate all the EU market-based instruments, including them providing a technical assistance. So it is not only having the rules and regulations and what to do and action plan, they have also technical assistance for de deploying these investments or, or to fostering these investments. Finally, how we will incorporate sustainability within providing the finance advice is also provided through this uh, taxonomy, uh, through, through this, their action plan. And what, what they mean that we have to, uh, uh, investment firms and insurance distributors, they have to offer a suitable products to meet the client's need. And therefore they need to offer an advice that how this product or service would be ESG compliant. And that is what they are doing. And, and therefore uh, they need to be more uh, educated about it and they should take the responsibility. They should include this uh, ESG principles within their advice. And that is what makes them accountable for their advice. And therefore it is very important to incorporate sustainability within the financial advice. And that is what this one does. And finally, developing uh, sustainability benchmarks is very important. And so that would require, you know, uh, amendment to several regulations. And uh, this one says that we should promote the transparency of benchmark methodology and features. Sometimes we come across some eco-label product and services, but we don't know how they are called eco-label or, or how this label has come to them. And therefore these benchmark methodologies should be transparent and disclosed to people to understand how they have reached to this eco label. And that is what it does. The commission proposes also to create two benchmarks that could reflect companies carbon footprint. So initially we had just a benchmark of saying that yes, this is good, 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 good in many things, but we did not have the measurement so now we are having a carbon footprint measurement to sh uh, dis uh, show people how uh, they can invest into the activities of portfolio considering carbon footprint. And the low carbon footprint uh, benchmark would be based on a standard decarbonizing benchmark and underlying stocks would be selected based on their carbon emission relative to the component stocks in the standard benchmark. 
So it will definitely show which ben, uh, which product is better within that range of the products. And they, this would be really important for anyone like even the end users like us that when we want to buy some small product like a dress, we can understand that how better we are investing in our products and uh, how we are mobilizing that market. The most ambitious positive carbon impact benchmark would comprise stock that are judged to be aligned with the Paris Agreement objective of limiting global warming to below two degrees centigrade. And the purpose of this regulation is to prevent greenwashing by providing investors with better information on companies' carbon footprint and the carbon emission reductions. And in addition to that, it will ensure that comparable information is available on ESG factors that are related to assets in which the index invests. So Commission's technical expert group will follow the stakeholder consultation, publish a report and so on. And that was done by uh, 20, uh, uh, 2019. Following that in February, 2020, European Securities and Market Authority, ESMA, established its strategies uh, on sustainable finance. And the first step was to implement the mandate in this area. And the strategy sets out key objectives, which can be summarized as integrating sustainability in the development of single rule book, building common approaches for in incorporating ESG factors in supervisory practices of NCAs, and then monitoring market development and identifying risk related to sustainable finance and then improving transparency on the role of ESG factors in the credit rating processes. So integrating sustainability in the development of the single rule book means whether that can empower focus, especially on the sustainable finance regulation or in the broader regulation context is the important task for ESMA and they have already delivered a number of pieces of technical advices as required by the EU uh, action plan. And this rule book is all about integrating sustainability in the development of a single rule book. So it empowers and uh, focused especially on sustainable final regulation, and it gives a single voice to everyone. And this has, and, and also it ensures consistent efficient and effective application of this all uh, EU regulation and contributing to common super, uh, supervisory culture for this task. And finally, there was a roadmap established in uh, 2022, which was called Sustainable Finance Roadmap 2022 to 24. And this sets priority areas and related actions for the European security market. And why it was established? Because there was a need to address these key challenges here uh, given by the uh, understanding what we already had from the last uh, few years. And these were, you know, uh, we had to have common definition of sustainable investment. Uh, we And there was a risk, we had to address the risk of greenwashing because people had different uh, ideas of how they are uh, combating carbon uh, emissions. Uh, and especially there was no uh, consistent approach in this. Also, the banks and insurers were left out. They had insufficient uh, understanding or consideration. They used to fund equally the known uh, sustainable and sustainable activities. So there was no um, vocabulary or uh, principles with them to understand where should they invest. And also, uh, uh, investors often... Uh, 
disregard sustainability factors by underpinning the, undermining their impact and so on so uh, and therefore this action plan of roadmap 2022 uh, 24 allows us to give reliable information it also allows us sustainability and risk management and then provides a roadmap for long terminism in governance and finally, there is this. This one gives you the uh, timeline with uh, different things happening from 2021 to 2028. And uh, I will because it is uh, plenty of things and plenty of activities here. I will skip this, but you can definitely have a look because it is self-explaining also and. Uh, you may be struggling to understand the acronyms here, but the second slide gives all the information of the acronyms here, which would which will give you full explanation of what I mean in the previous slide. And it is all publicly available. You can take your time to understand where it stands at the moment. And finally, I would like to just explain, uh, like put forward this, information that European Fund of Sustainable Development Plus, which I already mentioned before, it gives, it, it is a part of EU and gives an investment framework for external action. So how they would connect with the neighborhood and the global to extend these ideas of pre, uh, sustainable principle and investment and with the taxonomy and so on. And I, I think of course you all know because you, uh, Indonesia has already developed a green taxonomy. So these are uh, these are common areas evolving around the world. And I think uh, uh, they are very encouraging for people like us and to be very, uh, you know, um, uh, actually happy about all this is happening, that uh, at least we are able to reorient, at least at the moment, not the actions, but also uh, our thinking towards this. And uh, finally, I would like to say thank you very much. And we can definitely do it together if and we can make it happen. And these are all my social media uh, you know, uh, channels where you can connect with me. This is my email address. If you have any questions, you can email me and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Renuka, for the great explanation. Right now, uh, we will begin the discussion for Dr. Ati. Uh, maybe we'll respond about what Dr. Renuka have already uh, given to us. Dr. Renuka, very, very good presentation, yeah? Your information very, very comprehensive. I imagine you uh, hard work for collect uh, all information, I think. <laughs> uh, Dr. Renuka, yeah? Uh, based on your presentation, we know that uh, in Europe, implementation of sustainable finance, uh, I think, uh, has uh, running well, yeah? And I interesting uh, about uh, ten reforms, ten reform in uh, three area. Yeah, uh, I want to know uh, what the reform to be uh, the top uh, priority. Nah, and then uh, surprise that the taxonomy in the Europe have uh, six objective. Not not only about uh, climate change, yeah, but also about circular economy, about uh, health protection. Very very good, yeah, and uh, this is inspiring for uh, Indonesia, yeah, because in Indonesia about taxonomy focus on uh, adaptation and mitigation of uh, climate change, yeah. Uh, but I want to know, yeah, uh, how the classification in uh, taxonomy in Europe are there uh, distribute uh, until maybe 100 or uh, <clears throat> uh, 200 in economic sectors nah, and then uh, are there the specific institution to implement sustainable finance in Europe 
uh, if there are uh, what the most important what the most important to implement sustainable finance successfully like in Europe of course uh, I and the team as Indonesian people, yeah, uh, we want to know uh, what the necessary condition, the most important to successful implement sustainable finance. I think uh, maybe not only about uh, awareness, about commitment, but also about the how the government conduct a regulation to uh, establish uh, <clears throat> uh, to establish standard to establish. Uh, uh, benchmark uh, to implement sustainable finance. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. You. Rinka. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. For your first uh, question, uh, priorities, isn't it? So I'm just going back to my slides. Uh, let me just check. Uh, so priority is to, first of all, you know, we need to understand the taxonomy. What does taxonomy does? Of course, we have sustainability principles and they are plenty, uh, nearly global. They are very, uh, what do you say, commonly understood that everyone or all the activities need to be integrated within the sustainable, like thinking of sustainability. And especially we are putting three areas, E, S, G, uh, into it, but we also need to be economical viable, isn't it? So we are having actually four things like economics, uh, environmental and social, but, but the governance can allow us these all these three. So that is uh, principles, but the main thing is taxonomy. And I think EU has put a lot of stress on, a lot of emphasis on uh, putting taxonomy like and taxonomy is something called criteria what can be considered as sustainability activity and with what cannot be considered and to give some quantitative and qualitative uh, aspect to it they have also integrated carbon uh, footprint within that account so we measure also along with carbon footprint with it, with the latest so taxonomy is to just uh, tell you, okay, for example, let me ex give you an example. Like I want to buy a dress for a wedding. I know I have to buy a dress for a wedding. So I know which color it might. So I don't know which one I will buy, but I know that I want to buy green. I want to buy uh, which is made uh, handmade or maybe which has, uh, which has used less processes within that which has used less resource, uh, chemicals in it, something like that, which has uh, paid fairly to the employees who have worked into for that project, uh, for that dress and so on. So it is something like I want, I have these all criteria which would allow me to buy appropriate product. So that is called taxonomy. So we have to have a strong taxonomy to tell people, okay, you follow these rules, okay? And so you will get into the best activity which you want. So that is the priority, I think. Your second question, uh, can you please remind me again, your second question? Uh, for the second person, I think uh, this is just uh, just as appreciate for uh, from me uh, that for the second question, Doctor Renuka, I think this is just appreciation appreciate for from me uh, because the taxonomy in Europe have uh, six objectives, yeah? not only about climate change, yeah? but also about yeah. circular economy and protection of health uh, ecosystem. Yeah? Uh, this yes, is very, very in inspiring for, for us. Yeah? Uh, of course, for okay, Indonesia yeah. also, because in Indonesia, taxonomy just for uh, economic sector uh, related to mitigation and adaptation uh, of uh, climate change. Maybe right. I the... understand. You know, mm -hmm. there was a question like uh, while doing this, of course, when uh, immediate problem is climate change. 
But a lot, while we are doing these, we have understood that without systemic thinking, without having the whole idea, like a whole ecosystem uh, gathering, like uh, because if we are trying to diminish waste, then where will this waste go? We have to put it into use somewhere. And that gives the chance of having a circular economy. And so we have to extend our thinking beyond just reducing the waste, but to, or reuse or something, but uh, we also have the like uh, uh, seven R's within the waste hierarchy. But this allows us also to extend our, uh, you know, thinking and also our activities within circular economy. And that is what it is does, you know, once you start thinking, okay, when I, I uh, again, let me go to my example of my dress. I have bought the dress because it was a wedding dress. Of course, it might be expensive. I have invested in it highly. I will keep that uh, for a long years, you know, but what is that? It is going to stay there as it is. How about if I put it on a rent or put it for a use to someone else? to share with someone else, to wear it on another wedding occasion or somewhere else. So that can become then circular economy. I can also earn some rent out of it or I can uh, just sell it because it will be reusable by someone. So then it becomes a whole big process. And that is what we mean to extend our thinking, be creative, be innovative in this whole idea. Thank you. And the third question that uh, so I think you mentioned about specific people who might be uh, specific like, institution, doctor. Yes, specific institutions and uh, so principles of responsible investment is the main uh, group initiated, and that is also public, and everyone is allowed to attend their meetings and everything for free. There are plenty of programs going on. Uh, currently, also from 27 uh, April to uh, May, end of May, uh, there is a, a five uh, uh, episode program going on where you can uh, interact with this group. So certainly, and they produce all uh, reports and everything which is transparent, it is given out on public. So there are plenty of, and I did mention in my uh, presentation, different people like, uh, let me just uh, have a look uh, and uh, let me tell you one second, please. So um, we have this uh, social responsible investment fund people. Then we have, um, wait a second. Yeah, so uh, PRI, which I said, Principles of uh, Responsible Investment, they are high level expert group who are very much uh, uh, actually uh, directing all these activities. And uh, uh, then we have, wait a second, I did mention, yeah. Oh. No. Um, yeah, European Securities and Market Authority. They are now uh, having this uh, sustainable strategy and uh, they are leading on this uh, roadmap. So uh, uh, European Securities and Market Authority. And then there is another one which I mentioned who will be taking forward to, ah, here it is. So there are plenty of people. Like if you go to my slide 17, I will share this presentation with you, but if you go on slide 17, you have plenty of uh, designated uh, entities who are working within this. And uh, this all things are openly available and you will be able to, um, get access to them. Uh, the another one is like Global Europe and it is 
N D I C I, um, uh, and they are the also leading on this uh, Europe Global. So there are plenty of people uh, involved in all this, and uh, easily approachable. So definitely have a look once I uh, uh, share this slide with you. Thank you. And the last question, Dr. Renuka. Uh, what is your opinion? Yeah, what is the the most important? Yeah, to implement sustainable finance successfully. Okay, I I think what while all this is going on. It is our responsibility as an expert to understand this and take this information in a simple words to local people. It is our responsibility to connect with the community and to make them understand how this is possible. Now, when we, when we reach to the community, we will come across individuals and we will come across SMEs mainly. The large organizations are already uh, uh, having some support from the government and they can do such things. Of course, we should liaise with the big organizations, large organizations, so, can, so they can bring the change through their employees and through their products and services. But it is also equally important for the people and SMEs who are the suppliers and the buyers of these products and services to understand what should they invest in, what product they should buy, what service they should buy, and what uh, in, uh, investment they should support. So, and, and what I mean that just as I gave an example of a dress, whatever you are buying, in the form of product and services or whatever you are trying to invest through small or big investment, think of whether this investment is or whether this activity you are doing that is buying, selling or investing, does it have ESG principle in it? So try to just inform yourself that am I doing any wrong to the environment while I'm doing this? And if you are trying to understand that, one is environment is priority at the moment, but at the same time, social is also very important that am I doing any injustice to anyone by buying this product? So, or I am, am I contributing to the inequality of the economic activity by buying this product? So these two things, if you are doing it, I think that is what the ownership we should take uh, by to inform public and SMEs. And I think that is the most important thing we should be doing now. Thank you. Yes, very good, Dr. Renuka. Thank you very much. We are very, very grateful for your uh, presentation and your answer for all questions from me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. You should make this dialogue of okay. sustainable investment mm -hmm. on your uh, table. You know, like when you sit with the family and friends, mm -hmm. talk about this. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, okay, I will mm -hmm. have to leave now because I have another meeting. I will send my presentation to you. And uh, please also share your link, uh, recorded link with me thank you very much okay uh thank you dr actually we have a lot of questions to ask to you to discuss to you but maybe uh we, we will ask uh, via email uh, yes you can definitely ask email. me through email and i would be okay. happy to collaborate on your research or anything if you wish to uh please let me know thank you anyone okay. over here yeah. okay thank you very much Okay, Bye -bye. and we have a press uh, a certificate for you. Uh, okay, but we uh... okay. Mm -hmm.
It is a little certificate from us. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Oh, Dr. Renuka. <laughs> we will send by email to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, coming to the FTD, for your time, for the great material delivered to us. Uh, you are so extraordinary speaker uh, <laughs> that can give us a lot of insight. Okay, thank you for your coming and for your attention. Now it's time to close this agenda by saying Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you so much. Uh, I will close this discussion. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank Good you. morning. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you.